evangelization, a very, very big and buzzword. But when it's broken down, it is simply an invitation to share our faith. And one of the ways that we share our faith is by allowing ourselves to risk, to share a bit of our life story with other people so that they can see how Christ entered our life and how he made a change. When people give a testimony, they are not looking, they are not looking for praise, they are not looking for recognition. They follow a simple three steps. This was my life, this is how I met Christ, and this is how my life has been since. Tonight we are very privileged to have a young woman who is willing to begin our time together by giving her own personal testimony. Kendra Smith, I've known for many, many, many years um, since I was pastor at Blessed Sacrament many years ago. I've known her and her family. I've watched her grow. I've seen her study. I've seen her struggle and I've seen her succeed. She today is working in Agape, where she reaches out to the poor of our community. Tonight, she reaches out to those who are searching for Christ by sharing her story so that by sharing it, hopefully, she will allow us the courage to look at her own story. Kendra, would you do us the honor? Well, as Bobby said, um, my name is Kendra, and I'm actually in first grade here at St. Peter's now. I did grow up at Blessed Sacrament, um, but I moved away for school and then moved away for work. And when I returned to Cornwall, I uh, found my home here at, at St. Peter's. Um, I was very blessed to get to know God from a fairly young age. I had a personal encounter with him back when I was in grade nine at a Journey to the Father weekend conference. And since then, I've been blessed to know God and Jesus as a, as a personal being very present in my life. Um, but even with this, I still sometimes, I still sometimes walk away, usually little step by little step, and then I find myself restless and unhappy. So tonight, I just wanted to share a little bit about a particular time in my faith journey. Uh, and not necessarily my conversion story, but I just felt called to share about this particular time. So the summer after I graduated from university, both of my roommates got married, um, and it sent me into a little bit of a whirlwind. I had no idea where I was going to live that year, what I was going to do. I had finished my studies, and I hadn't really thought forward to what I was going to do afterwards. Um, my step grandmother became really sick at that time, and while I was in university, I worked as a personal care worker, so it just seemed appropriate that I would move to Toronto and take care of her and her time of illness. When she passed away, again, I didn't know what to do with my life. I hadn't thought forward. Um, but I decided I would stay in Toronto and I looked for work. I felt really lost at that point in my life. I didn't feel any strong desire or any calling to a particular field of work. Um, I had <clears throat> taken some steps away from God, so I really wasn't hearing or feeling Him in my life. And I was seeing the lives that my friends were leading. Um, some of them had gotten married, some of them were in incredible jobs, some of them had continued studies in their masters, and I just felt lost and that my life was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, at this point, I think I slowly but surely stopped praying altogether. I mean, I kept going to weekly mass. I knew that, that was an important part of my life, but there was no real personal connection with God. I didn't really spend much time with him, so naturally I didn't really hear his voice of guidance. I kind of, at this point, just decided, well, if you're not going to tell me what to do, and I can't hear you, well, now I'm just going to figure it out on my own. So I fell into a job at Ryerson University. Um, and threw myself into it because I didn't know what else to do. I started as a temp worker and worked my way up eventually into a full-time job where I stayed for three years. Um, I knew right from the get-go that this really wasn't where I was supposed to be. But even though I had walked away from God, I felt abandoned by Him. And I felt lost. Um, and so I started to become this person that I didn't even really recognize. 
I stayed in this job because, for all intents and purposes, it was good. Um, good pay, good benefits, um, great opportunity for growth and development, um, but I really didn't feel called to it. I think the biggest mistake that I made when I went to Toronto was I didn't invest in a spiritual life there. I wasn't giving, I wasn't volunteering, I didn't have any spiritual friends uh, that I could really talk with about, with, talk to about God, and I wasn't moving forward in my spiritual life, so I was moving backwards. I had this constant oscillation. Um, I was unhappy with the city and with the job, I really just didn't feel like myself, but again, like I said, it was a good job, so it was really hard to walk away from. And everyone in my life kept telling me how good it was, how good of an opportunity it was, you need to stay, you need to stay. But I had this nagging feeling. I knew I really needed to make a change, but didn't quite know what to do. So, eventually, in the summer of 2011, I reached a point of desperation and finally took it back to God in prayer. Um, essentially cried out to Him, I have no idea what I'm doing, finally admitted it. What do you want me to do? I'm so unhappy, and I realize it's because I'm not really living, I'm just existing. And I'm not really living because I'm not with you. So, I finally took it to prayer, and felt God saying, yes, yes, you need to make a change, but just not quite yet, just wait. In my restlessness, I found patience with him. And in April of 2012, I finally heard God saying, now is the time, now is the time to leave. So I spoke with my boss, who was incredibly supportive, and gave my notice. Still had no idea where I was going to go or what I was going to do, but I began planning and saving like a battle. I knew that while I didn't quite see exactly what was up in front of me, I knew that he was guiding me. I knew now that I was called to work in some sort of nonprofit organization or do some sort of social services, some sort of charitable work where I really felt like what I was doing was making a difference. And that I would start living in Ottawa or Cornwall, someplace closer to home, where I felt, where my heart felt at home. After I left work, I took a few months off and traveled for a little bit with my sister, for a little bit with a friend, and for the first time in my life, I traveled for a little bit completely on my own. And after these travels, which were completely life-changing, and brought me a renewed sense of independence and confidence and love of myself, I came home, spent a few weeks with friends and family, and then felt called to pull that computer out and start looking for work. And literally, the day that I started looking for work, the day that I felt called, now was the time, I saw a job posting for the Agape Center. And for the first time, in a very long time, I felt um, just a sense of excitement and passion, and I knew this was the job that I wanted. So I applied that day. I got a call back that afternoon for an interview. That was a Friday. I had the interview Monday call back on Wednesday, and started working the following Monday. So right now I work as the volunteer coordinator at the Agape Center, and I absolutely love my job. I love getting up in the morning, I love going to work, I love the people I work for, I love what I do. I love working for an organization that directly affects people and directly helps people. I love working with the incredible volunteers who give their time and their talent so generously. I've always had a passion for social justice and for caring for the vulnerable. And I've learned a lot about nonprofits, and I've been blessed to work with some of the most incredible women leaders who have encouraged me and inspired me and challenged me to reach for more. God knew. All along, God knew. All along, God had a plan. And all I had to do was listen, be open, be patient when He asked me to wait, and be fearless when he asked me to jump, trusting that, that he had it. So if you want joy, follow Jesus. If I look at my life, I can see this at play. The times I felt the deepest sense of joy 
are the times that have been closest to the heart of Christ. The times that I've listened to him and followed his call. The times that have been my darkest times are the times that I've felt most lost, are the times that I've been furthest away from him and his heart. Even though he's proven to me time and time again that he's got this. We thank you, Kendra, for sharing with us your own hopes, your own journey, and your own joy in being able to listen to the voice that calls you 